구약성경에는 숫자들이 참 많이 등장을 합니다. 구약성경에서는 창세기에 첫째 날, 둘째 날, 셋째 날 이런 숫자가 등장하고요. 또 신약성경에서는 물고기 두 마리와 보리떡 다섯 개 그리고 또 오천 명, 칠년 대활란 아마 구약과 신약 통틀어서 이렇게 숫자가 등장하지 않는 구절이 없을 정도이죠. 그런데 이 성경 속의 숫자들에 대해서 특히 유난히 더 관심을 갖고 연구해 오신 분이 계십니다. 이분은 미국 병원에서 마취과 의사로 일을 하고 계시는 의학 박사이십니다. 마이클 매기 박사님이신데요. 성경 속의 숫자 그리고 그 숫자가 이야기하는 여러 가지 숨은 비밀과 의미에 대해서 책을 쓰셨습니다. 박사님 이책 제목이 뭐죠? Divine Numerics and the Coming World War. 책 제목이 의미심장하고 오늘 아주 굉장히 중요한 이야기들이 나올 것 같습니다. 오늘 아, 마이클 맥이 박사님과 함께 성경 속의 숫자 이런 이야기를 좀 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. 박사님 반갑습니다. 어떻게 박사님께서 의학 박사님께서 이런 책을 쓰실 생각을 하셨습니까? You know, I had no intention ever writing a book. It doesn't help my my medical career. Or, um, it never was a desire of mine. But after the events of 9/11, shortly thereafter. Uh, I became uh, born again, accepting Yeshua as Lord and Savior, and something very um, unusual started to occur. Um, I started to be keenly aware of how numbers were being used in the Bible, uh, and then when I looked around in, the, in major world events uh, around us, I saw the same numbers being manifest. It wasn't just like a month period or, a, or you know, a year period, but this has been happening over 13 years. And I, what I would do at first is I would just make the numerical observation, write it down on a scrap piece of paper, not know what to do with it. So I just put it in a plastic bin and, next, and they just kept on coming. And I didn't know what to do with it. Uh, before I knew it, the whole bin was overflowing with information. And uh, then I started to be uh, led down uh, numerical trails uh, of information that I wasn't looking for. I didn't work hard at it. Uh, I was just living my normal life. But um, uh, events and just living my normal life was orchestrated in, in I believe, was orchestrated in such a way that um, it revealed a major convergence of, of numbers, of biblically-based numbers. Um, it came to the point where um, I decided that uh, this was credible enough uh, to be placed on the table for other people to look at. I make it very clear in my book that I cannot see the future. Um, uh, I'm merely sharing the information with others. The other part of the book is a timeless a reference on how God is using numbers in the Bible. So whether, whether we have World War III in the next 10 years or not, I think that the book still can make a contribution to the, to the Christian reader because when they read uh, their Bible verses, most people, uh, if a number is contained in the word verse, will just gloss over the numbers and um, not even think about it. But once you know how the consistency of God, how God is using the numbers, if you pause in, as you're reading the biblical text, you can see additional level of, of, uh, of revelation um, within the biblical text. So it should make, it should edify the current uh, Christian believer. I've, I came to the conclusion that it may also be used as an evangelistic tool for people who are not current believers in the Bible and who describe themselves as numbers people. These are people, people that typically say things like, I'm not making any decisions until I have the opportunity to run the numbers. I want to see the numbers in that. Well, you know, not all people in the world respond to numbers, but certain groups of people are numbers people. Uh, I've coined the term divine numerics uh, because I was um, dissatisfied with biblical numerology. When I would tell people that I was writing a book on numbers in the Bible, the first thing that they usually said was, oh, you're writing a book about numerology. And that's just not precise because there's a tendency that numerology is defined by the Webster's Dictionary, studies the occult meaning of numbers. And many people take that to believe that 
numbers have inherent pow power. Numbers have no inherent power. The person who's using the number is the, ones with the, is the one with the power. So that's why in, in the United States, in the operating room, there's not an operating room number 13. Why not? Because it's a superstition that is perpetuated by all the hospitals in this area. Because I don't want to have an operation in room, actually number 13 is the number of the high priest. If you want to look at it that way, it's, it's, it's a good number. So, so, it, it's, uh, so we want to focus not how, on how man is using the numbers, because when you or I use a number, there's not much power behind it. But when, if God does, for example, uh, seven is uh, the number that God uses for an act of completion of perfection in the earth realm. When he does something in a seven, there's massive power behind that. It will affect the whole world. So we want to focus in on how God is using the numbers, not how man is using the numbers. And that's why I decided to coin the term divine numerics in the title of the book. 촬영하기 전에 저하고 얘기할 때 박사님께서 특히 숫자 6하고 7과 관련된 이야기들 그리고 또 7이 두번 들어가는 몇 가지 사례들을 이야기하면서 해 주셨는데 굉장히 흥미로웠습니다. 그 얘기를 좀 다시 해 주시죠. The numbers of six, you know, six is the number given to man, and I go through both the, the first and second testaments. Six is the number given to man. It falls short of sevens, which is God's perfection. So man always fall, is falling short of God. So it seems like the world government, which I detail, seems to have an abnormal uh, a love affair with the number six, the UN. Whenever the, the world government tries to get to do something, why is it they always have to do it in, in a, some kind of number of six? For, new, for North Korean nuclear talks, all they talked about in the news media was six party talks, six party talks. Well, if you knew that oh God it uses the number six, you, you, you know, when you're trying to figure out if it's going to be successful or not, you go, I don't think it's going to be successful. Why? Well, I keep on focusing on these six party talks. And, it, and we know what happens in, at the end of Bible prophecy. They're not going to be successful. But it's as if God is labeling these talks as six party, six party talks. And, um, you know, to defer, that, to defer to that point, after they, the North Korean talks failed, they went into this Iranian nuclear talks. Well, here again, the world government powers, they, they labeled it six party talks again. I said, why did they have to label it six party talks? They actually said P5 plus one. Um, and in actuality, even though there were seven separate parties involved in the Iranian talks, the news media still electively chose to label it as six party talks. And you knew it was gonna be a failure. As far as two number sevens are concerned, whether it's in the form of a 77, a 14, which is a seven plus seven, or a seven times seven, which is 49, or 70 times seven. The 77 mathematical equation, which relates the number 77 uh, to the number that God uses for a new birth, what is two number sevens being used for? Um, and the conclusion, according to the interpretations and uh, the substantial amount of arguments that I put out on the table in, in my book, um, is that uh, God appears to be using two number sevens to represent Yeshua's return in Armageddon. Did you ever notice why, um, during the Battle of Jericho, God commanded his troops to march around Jericho one time on the first six days, but on the seventh day, he had them do it seven times, which is two number sevens. And then when two number sevens occurred, the wall of separation between uh, man and God fell. When it fell, they played the, uh, the shofar or the trumpet, long, one long blast. Today, I, I uh, verified with uh, the rabbis, the only time they do use one long blast is at the very end, the conclusion of Yom Kippur. 성경에서 하나님께서 숫자를 통해서 말씀하시는 
그런 경우도 있다라고 얘기를 하셨는데 구체적으로 좀 예를 들어 주시죠. Both the number 40 and the number 8 represent new beginnings. What's the difference? The difference is when God uses the number 40, it's usually a cyclical number, a new beginning. So when a 40 ends, a new cycle begins. When he uses the number 8, 8 is a new beginning, but instead of being cyclical, it's one that lasts for all eternity. That's why uh, God commanded Abraham to circumcise on the eighth day. Not only because physiologically your clotting factors are the greatest, so you clot from the circumcision, uh, but it was a, circ it was a symbol of an of a everlasting covenant, of the Abrahamic covenant. So he didn't say um, circumcise on the 40th day. Uh, no, circumcise on the eighth day because he was marking a new beginning that lasts for eternity. So there's an example of the difference between um, uh, number 40 and number 8, both representing new beginnings, but there's little difference in the nuance. Um, and you can see it manifest in the world around us today. Uh, because God defined one week to equal seven days, it so happens that when a human brings uh, pregnancy to a term, it's 40 uh, weeks. So it's a time and trial that ends in a new birth. 책 제목이 어, Divine Number이 그러니까 신성한 숫자와 Coming World War 그래서 그 다가오는 세계 대전 다가오는 세계 대전이라면은 이제 그제 3차 세계 대전을 얘기하는 것 같아요. 이제 세계 3차 대전이 일어나면 그야말로 이제 뭐 마지막 때라고 얘기할 수 있는데 그것도 역시 이 숫자를 통해서 알수 있는 겁니까? Most people do not know that every war that the United States has ever fought in the past has occurred in regular time intervals. They are not random occurrences, okay? Every single one. Now, just be, and it's past history, so no one can refute that fact. They can't, they can't argue it. However, I make it very clear that just because everyone in the past has occurred, it does not mean that this future must happen because that would be an irresponsible way to look at the future because no human being knows the future. So I make the analogy of a hurricane season in Florida. If you know it's hurricane season in Florida and you're standing on the beach and you're looking out at the ocean and you see these massive dark storm clouds rolling in and the wave gets to be gusting uh, the, the waves are 60 foot high waves and the wind is hail, howling and gusting and you know it's hurricane season and it's getting worse you make the conclusion it looks like the storm's going to hit okay so as we go into 2016 to 2026 we need to look at the shorter term signs do we see dark storm clouds on the horizon if we do then the probability seems more likely that World War III will occur. Back in 2012, 2011, I was looking for some sort of peace agreement signing you could see on TV in the year 2013. Because there was many things that converged on that year. Remember, that was the year where the Milan calendar, 2012, ended. And it ended in a 13.0.0.0. If you know what number 13 means, it's the number of the high priest. I said, well, that's curious. Um, it's also the 13th cycle of uh, um, a practice of ortho observant uh, Jews called Daf Yomi, uh, where since 9-11, uh, I think of 1923, they started a practice of reading one page of the Talmud synchronized worldwide. So essentially they've created a human uh, t a living time clock. And because when they go around one time, it's about 7.4 years per cycle. Uh, well, at 2012, it's when the 13th cycle started. So, and there was many convergences. So my, my, my focus was that and many other reasons. My focus was on, on 2013, if something happened, maybe a peace agreement. But when uh, President Obama made his first official trip as president to Israel, I was watching it closely and there was a, nothing happened like any signing of any peace agreement. But what I did notice was an unusual uh, flurry of uh, diplomatic activity 
uh, with uh, Secretary of State traveling to, to Israel, and then the Secretary of Defense, and then back and forth and back and forth. And all the time, the news media would come out and, and give us some line of what they were, oh, this is what we're doing. I said, there's something else going on. I just, but they're just not telling us. So, uh, well, at that point, I had to re-examine uh, Daniel 9.27 in the, in the King James interpretation. Because, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I come from a family of engineers. If something doesn't work, you go back and you re-examine what went wrong. You know, if you're trying to shoot off a rocket and it fails, you, you go back and said, what did we do wrong? So I re-examined it and, and I said, I need to look at Daniel 9.27 in other translations. And I looked at it in the complete Jewish Bible translation. And the book of Daniel was originally written in Hebrew. And at our, at our, um, at our uh, small little church, uh, we've had many visitors come in from, from Israel, and I had them translate it to verify in, from Hebrew. And uh, Daniel 9.27 says something very, in the, King, in the King James Version, says something very different uh, than the complete Jewish Bible version. In the King James, it says, if we can agree that he represents the Antichrist, it says, he will make a strong covenant with many for seven years. Okay, so my first question is, what does many mean? Is many a thousand people? Is it 10,000? Is it 10 million? Is it 100 million? What's many? It's very vague. Um, and it's he, well, no, it's not, I'm sorry, it says he will confirm the covenant. So say, okay, whose covenant is he confirming? And the, the most uh, people interpret that to be he is confirming the Abrahamic covenant. And that's reasonable. That may be right. That may be perfectly right. I looked at the complete Jewish uh, Bible translation, and it says he will make a strong covenant. So on one hand, King James, the Antichrist is confirming potentially God's covenant. On the other hand, complete Jewish Bible, the Antichrist is making his own covenant. And then it, it, the complete Jewish Bible doesn't say with many, which is you know, a vague term, but it says among leaders. Like, wait a minute here. If you, agreements are made just amongst us leaders, you don't have to have an official signing ceremony with the, with the video cameras rolling and they have the different pens and they're signing the documents. This could be a secret agreement. So uh, I then wanted to find out how often does the United States make agreements that they keep secret. So it turns out that come November of 2013, uh, the Obama administration announces that they have the preliminary framework for an Iranian nuclear deal done. And the news media were just perplexed. They're like, how did you have all this detail hammered out? When did this, how could you have done this so quickly? And they were told, well, we actually had a secret agreement back in March of 2013 we just didn't tell you about. So I had detained my evidence that secret agreements do occur. Now, this is not the secret agreement of, that we were looking for, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen, and it still has to be considered a possibility. And that's what my book explores. It, it, it's a, a substantive um, alternatives that may be possible until you need, we need to think outside the box sometimes. And uh, I'm not saying this is correct, but um, it, it's very uh, uh, substantiated. Uh, there's credible evidence to suggest that it, it has to be considered as a serious possibility. The lyrics to the um, uh, song, uh, Let Everything Turn, Turn by the Birds, uh, there's a time and a season for everything. I was working in the GI lab and that came on on the radio and somebody in the room said, oh, you know, that's Bible verse. I said, oh, it is? I didn't know that. And so I went home and sure enough, the words uh, comes from a, a chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter three, where it says, there's a time and a season for everything under heaven. And then under the banner of the general term, everything, it says some specifics. There's a time to, to reap, there's a time, time to sow, there's a time to reap. There is time for peace. There are seasons for war. And I said, well, you know what? That's not just figurative 
way of think, the speech. That is literal because what we've had before us, we have literal seasons for war in the United States. And the time intervals in numbers, it's a book on numbers, the time intervals between them are biblically important numbers too. So there's a biblical basis behind these, these war cycles or the war seasons. 성경 속에 이 숫자에 대해서 그 비밀과 그 의미에 대해서 이렇게 깊게 연구하다 보면은 지금 우리가 살아가고 있는 이 시대가 마지막 때다 이런 것들이 더 확신이 듭니까? All I can say is there is a, a massive numerical biblically based convergence and it seems like all the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. And I talked about Bible prophecy being viewed as a, as a jigsaw puzzle. But within the jigsaw puzzle, there are different types of categories of puzzle pieces. There are technological pieces, like buying and selling with numbers. There's the travel to and fro. Um, there's the social um, trends where we're moving more into um, away from uh, marriage between one man and one woman. Um, there's, this, there's the social trend of uh, going into a blurring of one world religion and falling away from the truth. Uh, the religious trends. So you have political trends, economic trends, technological trends, um, social trends. And what this book hopes, one of the, main, one of the many purposes of the book, because it, it, there is a ton of information in the book, but one of the main, one of the purposes is to try to put numerical puzzle piece, uh, jigsaw puzzle pieces onto the table to help link together the technological pieces to the political pieces, to help link everything else together. One of the things that, that, that God seems to de-emphasize in the Bible is when something is gonna happen. You know, that after he told the disciples what was gonna happen, the disciples said, hey, when is it gonna happen? I wanna know when. And uh, just before uh, Yeshua ascended into heaven, they asked him another time, hey, can you tell us when? <laughs> and he de-emphasizes when, and understandably so. If we knew when, we'd all be focusing and we'd all be getting our fortresses in the mountains. We, you know, we wouldn't be doing what we, we should be doing. We'd have different priorities. So it, it makes sense to me that we will not have that much of a, of a confirmation that things are really unfolding. And when it does happen, it will happen very fast in the days of Noah. Uh, like in the days of Noah, because in the days of Noah, everything was looking good. The sun was coming out, they were farming in the fields, and then all of a sudden, bam! Very fast. Like right now, we have stock market at all new highs, things are looking good. We're gonna have either one person elected or another person elected. No one's expecting something. But just, just be aware that is a possibility I don't know what the probability is, but it, it's in the realm of possibilities. And um, you know, even Daniel, when when he when he uh, uh, wrote down what God had told him, he basically said, "Hey, I wrote down what you told me. Can you tell me when it's going to happen?" And he got his answer. He said, "No, go thy way, Daniel, for the understanding of these things are reserved for the generation of the end." So even Daniel wanted to know when. As human beings, we always want to know when. But we're not getting the answer. So we may only get a few days heads up notification. And for a reason. That's for God's reasons. 박사님 오늘 아주 그 흥미롭고 중요한 얘기인 것 같아요. 우리가 그동안 잘 상기하지 않고 있었던 그런 부분에 대해서 많은 생각을 하게 하는 그런 시간이었던 것 같습니다. 복잡했지만 그래도 굉장히 흥미로웠습니다. 오늘 얘기해 주셔서 고맙습니다. 감사합니다.